de chaos. Rain. Chaos Rain presents 5G and the future of AI broadcasts January 30th, 2022. Enjoy. Talk Real Solutions hosted by Tyrone Thompson at TalkRealSolutions.com are the views of Tyrone Thompson and do not reflect the views of TalkRealSolutions.com, YouTube, or etc. The content here belongs to Talk Real Solutions and its many contributors. Views and opinions expressed by all contributors belong to them and not TalkRealSolutions.com or Tyrone Thompson, the host, or etc. All data and information provided Provided on the site is for informational purposes only. Talk Real Solutions makes no representations as to accuracy, completeness, correctness, suitability, or validity of any information on this site and will not be liable for any errors, omissions, or delays in this information or any losses, injuries, or damages arising from its display or use. All information is provided on an ad as is basis. Are right, in a world where there's crime, corruption, violence, murder, rape theft, and all forms of atrocities that plague the world in which we live in today. What you witnessing, we are living in a state of chaos, and take a more greater or extremer chaos to restore the order in which the world we live in today. Good evening. Good evening, everybody. This is Chaos right here, and this might be something new in a way of, you know, I don't want to call it a new type of series I'm doing here on the Chaos Rain show on the TRS, TRS side of things. 
But it's something that, you know, I'm getting a little custom. And there's so much information out there. I say maybe I'll do a few shows on this. I made it different shows than out of the usual shows I do on this channel. So I'm hoping that y'all get more, um, feel more receptive to this type of little information. Um, like always, if you're new to the channel, make sure you hit the subscribe button and the top notification when I go live or uploads here on the Chaos Man channel. Also, you can follow me on Twitter at Chaos Rain number seven, or should I say Chaos Rain seven? Also, you can add me as a friend on Facebook, Eric Rain on Facebook. I go by that name for Facebook for the channel itself. We could chop it up. We could communicate. You could share things on the Facebook page. Once you're a friend of my friend of mine's on Facebook. Um, the Facebook page is a little bit more open up to a degree, but mostly it's more focused on to the channel I have already and the platform, the podcast, the streaming of the Chaos Rain channel. So if you want to add me as a friend on Facebook, add me now and I will kindly add you back as a friend on Facebook. What else? Um, oh, another thing. Since I'm here... I also have a Discord, and the Discord is on the About section of the Chaos Rain channel. So if you want to join my Discord service, it's free to join. Um, the funny thing about Discord, a lot of people are not aware of, um, it is a very useful server for a lot of things. And... I think everybody should have a Discord for a case, maybe. Um, you should get one. Oh. My fault. Let me cancel. Shouldn't do that. All right. I'll throw it in here. So if, you, if you're not really familiar or know what Discord is, don't worry. Um, I'll drop it here in this chat room here. And if you don't get it through this particular channel, you could look for it on the About section of my YouTube channel, Chaos Rain. Um, let me see if I'm back. Go back. And here you go. And like I said, you can find those information also on the channel as well. So, oh, and one other thing I forgot. Go to TalkRealSolutions.com where you find a three-point plan for black power and black achievement. Also, you'll find a list of black-owned banks on the website as well and latest articles on Talk Real Solutions website itself. So check it out. You also could donate to the Talk Real Solutions website as well. Um, for wherever you think the webpage and the TRS channel on YouTube, what's it worth, that information is there. Also, you can now, f um, if you go to Facebook, if you add Talk World Solutions, because Talk World Solutions got a Facebook page, you get invited to the private chat room or the DM side of the Facebook side of TRS. A lot of interesting information is on the Facebook side of Talk World Solutions, and a lot of shits and jig giggles also on that um, Facebook page. So if you want to know what's going down in the DM, by all means, like the Facebook page. And that's pretty much it. I think I lay up all the information. So we can get into the title at hand. This is Chaos, the Chaos News of the Chaos Rain channel. So the first thing we are going to probably look at, and really, we're going to probably talk mostly and focus on 5G. Yes, 5G. And with 5G, as y'all know, it's now up and running. And it's been running for some time now. They said it was up and running. What they call it? Um, since last year or now it's not up and running this year. And one of the issues we have for the last um, bandwidth, if you want to call it 4G, it gave you from last time I checked, the few features what 4G offers. 
and let me see if I can read it to y'all before I go into 5G and see what 5G offers. Because we got to know what they do before we go into, is this a good or bad thing? And we want to get out of the spooktism of things about the dangers of higher and more powerful radiation so we have more broadband speed so we could use our technology and be able to use it with less latency. If that's the best word I could call it. So I'm just looking at this, trying to find it. From what I'm seeing here, from this little synopsis, what were the history of mobile technology? When we had 1G, that was back in the late late 80s, early 90s, which gave us analog technology. Then 2G came around that, around the mid 90s, I believe. And I'm getting mixed up between the time. I'm just giving you what I've remembered. 2G gives you digital technology, cell phones particularly. 3G, which gives you wireless capability. I think that's around 2000s. The 4G was supposed to give you phone become computers with 4G. Now with 5G, it said we get unparalleled latency. That means there is very little latency in regards to bouncing for um, information. But let's go into the history of 4G, shall we? And mind you, tonight will be a boring subject for those that don't understand. And the reason I'm just giving you a disclaimer now, because let's be honest, we really understand the difference of what is in the environment, and we don't really pay attention to the news in another way. But like always, like Chaos Rain, I am here to raise your attention span. And your attention span needs to be raised because God knows the attention span of the average human being is less than five seconds. That is no good. You cannot absorb or retain any form of information under the five-second threshold. So here, the mission for Chaos Rain, I'm here to raise that attention span so it breaks that five-second threshold because God knows your five-second threshold of attention is greater to things like entertainment, sports, and potentially all forms of other media outlets that will make you laugh, cry, and etc. Okay. Okay, I think this is, is this the one? Let's check. Yeah, this looks like a difference. All right, here's one insider, inside newspapers. 4G versus 5G. The key difference between the cellular network generations. The key difference between 4G and 5G is speed. Because always when you look at bouncing certain wireless networks, information, etc., speed is very important. How much information is passed through on the speed of and with, the latency, etc. All those things that is required to make things move much more faster. That's why if you look at 4G, like I said earlier, you won't have the capability of running and using what we call smartphones without the capability of 4G. Remember, the iPhone came out in 2007. Makes it marks now 15 years iPhone has been in existence. The touchscreen version of a phone, more like a computer version of a phone. It's been around that long. Not only that, that's where you have your possibility of your gaming, meaning much faster ways of playing games online, much better and efficient. Now, if y'all recall, and I remember this personally, back 13 years ago, I think 2009 per se, 4G was up and running. And think about this. You know what happened of that year going on to 2009? We had a crash, a housing crash of 2008, where everything was trying to get back in order, and a lot of business, a lot of people that had 
either retirements or anything, lost a substantial amount of money back in 2008. And lo and behold, the next year, we have what we call 4G. I mean, yeah, 4G came in and was up and running the next year. The next year, 4G start running. And during that time, if you remember during that same process, cryptocurrency, which Bitcoin was a technology developed through an Asian man of 2008 and was not revealed until 2009. The same time 4G was up and running, people. Do you follow the, the correlation between faster internet, faster bandwidth, new technology are able to emerge? And mind you, we had online play at the time, but online was not really that good depending on your provider with 3G. But because 4G came to play, now internet play, play um, internet games or even go as far as playing online games made it more possible with 4G. And I think during that same year, most of your computers at the time, you have an old laptop, desktop and stuff, was still running on a 4, 3G um, network. It was not like wireless, wireless per se, that good. And it was there back in the early 2000s, mid early 2000s. But now because of 4G, wireless cable was much faster. It made it more easier that you don't always require an internet cable to hook up on your computer, your laptop, or whatever. So that's just a brief background of it. All right, let's keep going. 5G is expected to be much faster than 4G while offering lower latency and better bandwidth. The cellular infrastructure that enables wireless communications gets an upgrade roughly every 10 years. Currently, 5G is slowly replacing 4G around the world. Now, we can go back in what I said about 1G to now 5G. So we do the math right. 1G then came out into like maybe late 70s, early 80s maybe. And then 2G didn't come out to the 90s. Then 3D, 3G didn't come out to 2000. And, you know, the rest is history. So we were really needed an update, an upgrade from the Gs. And we we're long overdue. So now I find that this is the year now, because now I'm feeling it and it's now on its way now and it's now up and running. We are very overdue for 5G technology. Let's keep going. Every decade, the, cell the cellular industries pre perform a major upgrade to its wireless infrastructure. The 2000s were dominant by 3G, while mobile phones in the last decade ran on 4G, which makes sense because your cell phone now, whether Android or iPhone, iOS, is a miniature computer, more smart than you. <laughs> and I mean that bluntly. Because as the phones get smarter, people do not catch up, um, unfortunately. And as I'm looking, it makes sense. So let's keep going. Oh, and I, my, my apologies, I did not give the call number for today's stream. So today's stream, the call number is 717-908-1834, access code 917-324-POUND, I repeat, 717-908-1834, access code 917-324-POUND. And today's subject is title. Chaos Rain News, or I, should, or I should, should call it Chaos News. I'm stumbling here. My apologies. You know what I'm saying? All right. Let me check. I'm checking my sound. Okay, my sound's good. All right. Okay. So now let's keep reading. The first 5G network starts to debut in the U.S. last year, which might prompt the question, 
What is the difference between the 4G cellular networks you use now and 5G networks that are on their way, which we're already up and running now? The key difference from, between 4G and 5G, and here's the breakdown. The majority difference between the two network technologies, speed. In most conversations about 5G, speed is often the specs that is used to differentiate it from 4G. And that makes sense since each cellular generation has been significantly faster than the ones before. 4G can currently reach top speed of up to 100 millibytes through real world performance and generally more or no more than 35 MBP megabytes. I think that's what they call it. But don't quote me wrong. Uh, I'm just doing something right now, guys. So I'm just... I'm going to scroll through some things, guys, before I continue on. And make sure y'all like this stream. Share this as well. This is important. All right. So let's continue. 5G has the potential to be 100 times faster than 4G with a top theoretical speed around 20 gigabytes and current real world speed from 50 megabytes to 3 gigabytes. But it's a little more complicated than that. There are three main favors of 5G and each one has its own speed. The so called low band 5G somewhat faster than 4G with performance around 50 to 250 megabytes. The faster version of 5G calls high band 5G is the version that reaches 3 gigabytes. For details, read articles of three range of 5G frequencies. And let me see if there's an article on that. Yeah, there is. And I'm not going to focus on it. Let me go back. Latency. Now, if anybody ever took electronics or co computer science or whatever you want to call it in college or high school, they always tell you what latency is. And latency is always the time in which the duration and time between information is passed through. Now I made I made that I won't say I made it up, but that's what I recall if I could remember. But here what is stated here in this article, the insider. Latency is a measure of time it takes a pack of information to travel between two points. Hmm. It can be through uh, thought as a delay that taxes any data transfer no matter how fast the Otherwise, is latency in 4G network is currently about 50 milliseconds, while 5G network is expected to shrink that to an impressive one millisecond. Hmm. That's fast. That's fast. Very fast. Reducing latency will be critical for many applications where 5G will s allow connected devices to rely on the cloud for processing of data such as self-driving cars that might use 5G to let a cloud-based AI make real-time navigation decisions. You know the um, Knight Rider effect? Matter of fact, I wish I had the theme song, but anyway. Yeah, that's what they're talking about. And as you know, reducing latency will be critical for many aspects from what I said before. Um, 
for driving cars. So let's go down. Let's go down. I'm just looking at something. All right, I gotta make sure I'm not making too much noise here. So, move forward. The coverage, even after a decade of 4G, there are still remote and rural areas around the world that have poor 4G coverage. 5G is just getting started, and so its coverage is essential, non existing outside of a handful of major cities. 5G will take several years to reach a level of coverage similar to 4G, and it will have different implications, high, medium, and low band 5G, each with its own spec, I'm mean, sorry, its own speed and bandwidth. So it's going to take, I would say, within this decade for 5G to really caught up in certain cities, major cities across the United States, where it is somewhat up and running, but it's not up and running in all parts of the United States like that yet. That's still a lengthy process from what is read here. And I'm not sure when this article came out. Let me see when this article came out. Hmm. This came out last year, the end of last year. So it's somewhat relatively, relatively new. Relatively new. Bandwidth. 5G is expected to have significant more bandwidth or capacity than 4G. As well, in part, this is because 5G will make much more efficient use of available spectrums. 4G uses a narrow slice of the available spectrums from 600 megahertz to 2.5 gigahertz. Now, if y'all notice, your computers, your laptops, etc., if it's not a high quality machine laptop, are running off less than under two gigs of a two gigahertz chip. Now, if you have a a basic gaming laptop, you're looking at roughly over two two gigahertz. But if you have like a low quality laptop, which most Americans do, because Americans don't, uh, let me take it back. Except if they're Mac users, and I'm not sure what the specs on a Mac book, you're you're mostly getting mostly uh under or just slightly above two gigahertz chips in your laptops. Now, if you got like a ba uh gaming laptop, which I advise everybody to purchase for your own doing for applications and other things you need to do with a game laptop than just a regular low quality um machine. Or I, or I could say the low quality laptops that's under five hundred dollars. Um, you need it for the power, the things to operate, with the help of good RAM, which RAM should be, if you're just starting off simple, eight gigs of RAM is the benchmark you need. Preferably over twelve gigs of RAM. You can go higher if you can. Well, normally you want to you want a computer that has very good RAM RAM memory. You need some good RAM sticks. And RAM, if people know what it is, is random access memory. You need some of that when you bounce around information and things that your computer can remember and perform. And if I could show you my computer or my laptop here, I have. Param primarily, I have 60 windows open, and my computer does not slow down. And the reason why is because I have over 16 gigs of RAM. I think right now this I added extra um, 16 gigs, so we're looking at 24 gigs of RAM on this laptop. So for those that want better performance for certain tasks or greater tasks, you need to look for computers that have those type of specs. Now for gaming, that's a little bit more touchy because you need some more than um, a certain graphics card. But usually if you have a Ryzen um, chip or something that's 6 or greater, 
that would help. But we're going to keep pushing for it. I'm not going to go into more detail. I'm just giving you little um, tips here and there. If you're going to go the route of using certain computers to do certain tasks, the more powerful, the better, I say. And you can't go wrong with more power. All right. But 5G is divided into three different bands. Each band has its own frequency range and speed and will ha have different applications and use case from consumer business and industries. That means there's a substantial higher capacity on 5G. And it's more, it's related coverage. All right, so that's that first article. I'll leave it there for the chat room. I'll put that in the description. Uh, what's next? Uh, oh, yeah. That was just a difference, people. Now we can get into the meat of things, the heart of things. Let's see, where is it? All right, next article. And let me make sure I'm looking at the right article. Uh, hold on, guys. I'm trying to find. Okay. Now we get into the actual article. And I'll put that in the description, this article, so I'll, I'll copy and paste and save it somewhere. The status of 5G rolls out in 2021 and 2022. Majority U.S. mobile operator, operators, AT&T, Dish, T-Mobile, Verizon, etc., are focused on deploying 5G through 2022. And there's more on the timeline. Major mobile operators, AT&T, T-Mobile, Verizon, etc., multiband 5G through 2021 through 2022. AT&T and Verizon will also strengthen their high band millimeter wave and low band 5G offering through 2022. New entering dishes, meanwhile, plans to commence its initial commercial 5G service early in 2022. AT&T 5G rolls out. AT&T says it will start deploying 5G services in the mid-band, C-band spectrums by the end of 2021, which we already ended, and now we're in 2022, allegedly. Um, AT&T plans to deploy the first 4 megahertz of the 80 megahertz C-band spectrums acquired from the last auction by the end of 2021. AT&T spokeswoman Tiffany Hakaya said, we expect to cover 70 to 75 million people with C-band by the end of 2022 and 200 million by the end of 2023. So it's going to take an increase from under 100 million to roughly over 200 million by 2023. And this only applies to America. Other parts of the country outside the first world nation has 5G ready. The operator already covers 250 million people in nearly 500 markets in the country with 5G Viva Dynamic Spectrum Sharing, DSS, on its 850 megahertz bands, DSS enables 5G new radio and 4G light to coexist on the same frequency, but it's limited to 5G download speeds to 4G levels around 50 meg megabytes, ATT said it will expand, it will expand, it will expand, sub 6 gigahertz coverage by 2022. And ATT also intends to extend its 39 gigahertz MM wave to 5G coverage, which is companies call 5G through 2021. The service delivers speed on one gigabytes or more, but can only cover limited areas of cities that are densely networked with high band 5Gs. We offer mobile 5G over 
MM waves and part of 38 cities across the U.S. Akaya said by the end of 2021, we expect to offer this to part of more than 40 cities. Now we have 50 states, 40 cities, or we might have more than 40 states in America, but I don't know. That That's where they're expecting to roll this out. This 5G rollout. Now, anybody got a dish in the house? Do expect an upgrade. And if you didn't expect an upgrade, you should demand upgrade very soon. Because you want that faster bandwidth for your um, constant streaming of streaming service and probably your, um, what do you call it, playing online gaming if necessary. Dish is the only U.S. operator that is currently building a new Greenfield 5G network, um, 5G wireless network. The company has some things or hit some timing snags along the way and has fallen behind its promise and schedule with the launch. Now, Dish, it will launch its 90-day beta trial during the fourth quarter of 2021 in Las Vegas, and the company plans to launch its initial commercial 5G service in that city in the first quarter of 2022. T-Mobile 5G rolls out. Naville Ray, or what do you call it? Naville Ray, T-Mobile president of technology, announced that the operator of 600 megahertz extends range from 5G coverage over 305 million people across 1.7 million square miles in the U.S., although its 600 megahertz service offers low transfer speed with downloads between 30 megabytes and 75 megabytes. It enables the low-band service to cover almost the entire population of the country. Ray said that T-Mobile 5G, I mean, my fault, Ray says that T-Mobile's 2.5 gigahertz mid-band 5G service now covers over 165 million people with download speeds averaging of 350 megabytes. The operator plans to to extend the coverage of mid-band ultra-capacity service to over 200 million Americans by the end of the year. The average amount of mid-bands is 2.5 gigahertz spectrums we have deployed for 5G is 600 to 80 megahertz right now. But our plan is to expand that to 100 megahertz by the end of this year, Ray wrote in T-Mobile Post. T-Mobile also launches its 5G fixed wireless broadband home internet service commercially in April of 2021. It's expanded this service across 51 towns and cities in four states to late September. The operator said it now serves more than 600 people nationwide. The system uses 10 megahertz and 2.5 gigahertz bands for 5G across the offer of 4G LTE connectivity. And we're going to pause there for a second. All this was prepared because they're already 10 years behind, actually a few years behind of really moving forward and upgrading the Gs. Because they do this every 10 years. Things have to be expanded, move fast. Technology is supposed to be advanced and much more, not only affordable, but more useful and reliable for people that have the money to pay for it. And like I said, 5G was long overdue, people. I'm not sure if people got a, a modem in the household. If you have a, a regular modem, and depending when you purchase your modem for your house, for your internet, always look in the back. See if your modem does co um, cover and has 5G technology in it. Now, if it doesn't, you need to upgrade your modem. I don't care how you do it, upgrade it. Because once they put out more higher bandwidth, the way how you use your internet is going to be pretty much slower. 
because things upgrade and usually they're going to force the consumers to upgrade your internet provider service. Now will this be cheaper? This upgrade? I cannot give you the answer because normally if you're not upgrading your stuff every so many years, because they said that normally if things stop working or it, it doesn't work no more or it's damaged or it's not functioning like it used to, normally the, your um, internet provider will come in and replace it for you. That's the goal. Well, normally, you as a person, you could probably upgrade any time because the penny paying certain service, you should have that liberty to ask them. They, they should be able to do it without costing you a link. I could be wrong, but don't mind me. That's just my opinion. Anyway, Verizon's 5G rollout. Verizon secures an average of 161 megahertz of a C-band spectrum nationwide. At a recent Federal Commun Communication Commission auction, makes it the big winner of the mid-band sell-off. We previously said we cover 100 million people and use C-band spectrums by the end of March of 2022. Verizon spokeswoman Christina Moon Ashar says, and we're going to use the voice. <laughs> Verizon reports that during a trial run, it achieves download speeds of 4.3 gigabytes aggressively or aggregating C band and MM wave spectrum. Verizon currently has 82 towns and cities using its 28 gigahertz MM wave service brand as ultra. Why, Ben, the operator declines to talk about how many more markets it plans to cover with MM Wave in 2022. However, describe that a competitive information. Uh, thank you, Christina. It's low band mobile 5G service using D D DSS currently covers 230 million people in the U.S. Verizon said it plans to expand its 5G fixed wireless access to more cities in 2022. And the FWA service currently covers 57 cities in the U.S. And that's the end of that article. And moving forward. Oh, we have one call. Before I check this call, moving forward. What this all means now that 5G is here? Now, as y'all know, a lot of people were complaining about, well, not complaining, but a lot of people were going for the internet and they find that the dangers of 5G here. And I get it, and I'm very much concerned like everybody else. But here's my thing with 5G. And I'm not sure if I said this on a previous broadcast I've done on here that we are moving into a technical age, what we call the fourth wave industry, or they call tech industries. And with tech industries, people are relying more on automated things and much more efficient internet to fulfill a certain task for everyday life. And let me check the line, and I'll take the first caller. Lady Ottawa, you there? Hello? Lady Ottawa? All right. She's not lady. So let me go back. So you must not be fear of this. Now, I might give some maybe simple solutions for those that's concerned about the high radiation. And even I heard that this also correlates to why people get sick and get like flu like symptoms and et cetera. I'll give you a suggestion of what you could do. And it's just a suggestion. I'll do that as I wrap up this particular broadcast. 
So let's hang on tight. Now move forward. And let me find the article. What this 5G will be in regards how we look at the future of criminality. Now I remember my good friend Mr. Macon did a stream on this about death to the real nigga. Which you know most this culture, the Negro culture, the so called gang violence, black on black violence, which really is really obsolete and has been obsolete now for the last twenty six going twenty seven years because we all know back in the 90s, black and black violence was very high in the black community. Very high. It was so high that, you know, you hear those peer um, shootings every night, every week, back in the 80s up to roughly to the mid-90s. And we all know when the three-strike, what they call the three-strike law was created and was I guess concocted by Mr. Biden and some other politicians, particularly back in 1993, going on to 1994, mind you. Which now we it's now roughly almost 20 years since that bill was drafted and created. A lot of the alleged people that were in the criminal element, black males especially, and I remember there was a video of a documentary or a short little. Um, sit down. History of one particular rapper. I think his name was Trick Daddy. During that time, um, when he was doing his slinging back in the late eighties and roughly approaching the early nineties, and mind you, he did serve some time in jail. Cause at the time he was a young boy, young teen, he did probably um juvenile time, per se. Um, and might have did some maybe actual time, maybe that. A friend of his in the pen told him and warned him a heads up that that there's going to be a new bill that is going to potentially lock a whole lot of people if they commit crimes more than two times. Well, I mean, I mean that if you look at the criminality back then that was so high that was a problem during the late 80s and 90s where a lot of so-called Negro um, preachers and, and so-called Negro civil rights so-called leaders up here begging the government to say, you need to put an end to the violence. We're hurting each other in the streets. We're killing each other. So like most politicians, they hear the cry of you Negroes and say, okay, Negro males and daughters, I will present a bill to lock away those mean and bad people that give you so much a problem. I will fix the problem. I will fix the problem. Sure, I will. Sure, I will. And the problem was solely fixed with a slight stroke of the pen. And you must understand, the pen is much more mightier than the sword, mind you. And behold, the three-strike law was put into effect and been put in effect since 1994, ironically. And since then, when um, Trick Daddy, one of his inmate friends, told him and gave him the heads up that you can't be putting yourself back in this pen and putting yourself in position to be back in jail. Because if you go back here one more time, and at that time he had roughly, I think, two strikes at that time. He said, if you get locked up one more time, you're going to be here for life. You're going to serve a life sentence. So like always... Trick Daddy got his life or got his ish in order after 1993 going after 1994. And lo and behold, you know, he became an artist during the um, late 90s, as y'all know. And here's the funny thing about it. If the word on the street told this future entertainer that what was coming down the pipe, you know, most Negroes, black males especially, don't want to be, be, how can I say it? They don't want to be a jailbird for the rest of their life. Because let's be honest, you people. No man of any age, 17 or older, doesn't want to be somebody else's bitch in prison. 
Now we hear the stories of, and we hear the really sick stories. What goes on in prison? Men are engaged in, you know, boy love acts, and being someone's girlfriend in jail. And no man of any consequence wants to be a prisoner for the rest of his life and be somebody's little whore, and lack of better words. And and you know, funny thing, we hear all the funny jokes that you get in screwing your booty hole in jail and all that stuff. And it's real. It's bad. It's sad, but it goes on. But imagine you as a man of any age, you doing life in jail. You're gonna be somebody's bitch. I don't care what they tell you. So one thing it did with that crime bill, it scared a lot of Negroes, especially men. Cause no man don't want to risk going to jail for the rest of their life after two strikes, going on a three strikes, three strikes, and you're out. And to be honest with you, three strikes, you're out was really constructed anyway for the purpose of really locking people that's undesirable is permanently in jail for the purpose of the corporation. So before I read this article, I'm going to take a call. And Miss Lady Ottawa, please call back. I saw you line. I could take it up because I was in a ranting mood. So first call, I open up. Call, I open line. Who's this? It's Greg. How are you doing? How are you doing, Greg? That's good. How's it? Wait, so wait, what? Doing, yeah. I don't like when you do that. You, you're not you're not joyous, bro. You should be a little bit more enthusiastic when I call. You know, I don't like that. Mm. Hi, Greg. How you doing? Mm. <laughs> you don't want me to call, man. No, no, that, I mean, that listen. My soul. You know that, right? Oh, come on, Greg. No, come on, you're a man. You don't, don't don't be like that. But anyway, what's on your mind, brother? No, what's I'm I'm about to go see counseling. I'm about to see counseling after I talk to you. I mean, I'm serious, bro. Um, see thing, counseling for what? This crime. I, I was on the way you. Why, you, you need counseling, yeah, Greg? When I call you say, I, yeah, yeah, it's kind of hurt my feelings. Man. I need to psychological all right, counseling. All right, all right, go, 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 go in there what you want to say. Go ahead. I'm listening. Go ahead. <laughs> uh, the crime, I, I was always remember that when they passed that, um, that, uh, you know, we had a lot of, you know, we had a lot of, uh, we had a lot of dope in the area, and, and black folks were the ones that were they wanting the bill because I remember the crack epidemic. In the 80s, I was alive. I was I wasn't a kid. I was a full functioning adult, and it was crazy. I don't I don't know if you remember it. But it was crazy out here. People were stealing lawnmowers and, and other people's uh, uh, yards, taking aluminum siding off people's homes. Uh, it was crazy. It was chaos, shooting, uh, and and people like me, not me, but people. Uh, I, I didn't do it, but people were demanding, black men and women were demanding that, that the government do something about all this debt and crime for buying this crack. It was crazy. It was chaos. And they introduced a crime bill. I thought I thought maybe it was a little bit harsh, you know, because we had different, we had different uh, incarceration um, policies for crack as, as far as powder cocaine. And we, we were doing crack, black folks, uh, white people too. But that was more of our drug of choice, and the white people were doing powder, and the disparity in the, the in the in the uh, sentencing guidelines. You mean, I think they called you know, cocaine. They were labeling right? like they were labeling, well, powder cocaine, yeah, powder cocaine. Okay. Okay. And they was to get all these damn these, these street street these street level dealers off the streets, mm-hmm. and there were disparities the disparity between the powder, which is mostly white people do, mm-hmm. and then the crack that we were doing. White people do mm-hmm. it too. White people were doing uh, crack. Too. Right. But uh, but it was black people that were demanding this crime bill. It didn't, it, you can say it was some white people. It was not. It was black men and women. Where was I living at the time? I was living in Sacramento at the time. And uh, people were mm-hmm. tired of this shit, man. And they said, lock them up. Get them off the streets. So mm-hmm. you can go back and uh, I know I know uh, uh, Hillary, Hillary and Bill Clinton pushed it. And I think Biden wrote it, right, I believe? Yeah, but I think they said Biden wrote it. Yeah. It. yeah. Yeah, Biden and somebody else wrote it, but 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 it was us black people that were demanding this fucking crime bill. But and if you look back at it, I think it might have been a little bit unfair because because brothers that were like street level dealers were catching these long ass sentencing twenty years, ten years for it was like a point system how they did it. And if you had like I think five points, you were getting all these these life in prison. It was crazy the bill, but I think I think maybe they overreacted a little bit. You know, these, but but mm-hmm. it was crazy out here, man. It was fucking crazy. You know, you have women selling uh, their babies' diapers to get a hit. Uh, like, we gotta get these motherfuckers off the street. 
And uh, one more thing that you said about this, about the prison thing. You know, I've you know you go to prison. I've been to jail, but not prison. But you go to prison, man. If, if you're straight going in there, you're, you're, you know it's not like that, man. It's, you know, unless mm-hmm. you want to give give up your ass, it's not really like that in there, man. If you're a straight dude, <laughs> you know, going in there, you know, you're gonna be a straight dude coming out of there. They're not into fucking dudes in the ass. That's just that's just not. How you know, Greg? How you know, Greg? Because <laughs> I I've, 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 I've talked to my fucking I've talked to dudes who've been in. And, and, and Folsom and all kind of places, and they said it's just, it's not like that in there. It's just really not like that. So they, they show it on TV, just like that pimp shit, you know, like that huggy bear shit you see in Starsky and Hutch. It's just not like that. That pimp shit that's going into prison. It's just not how they portray it on TV. What? Well, you're a straight dude. Say if I get, I, you know, I go ahead and get a little, you know, three year pinch somewhere. I'm gonna turn into a, a punk. I'm gonna fuck some dude in the ass. You know, that's just not the way it works, man. I mean, you I'm have to survive up there, you know what I'm saying? Cause think about it. Most of those dudes are doing, that's yeah. doing you know, non-offense crimes, so actual criminal crimes like murder. Whatever crime they're doing, right? They're, they're really doing, they're, they're supposed to be, been, yeah. being there, right? That, think about it. No. You're not no, going to have, hold, 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 let, me see, let me see, let me see. You're not going to be around yeah. women unless you're in a certain prison where there's yeah. women, um, what they call it, guards. I mean, that's what you call them. Um, what do you call them? Those guards, those women. Um, yeah. um correctional guards. You know what correctional I'm saying? Yeah, cor- there's officers. women correctional officers. CEOs. It's like it's like this. If there's no women in there, yeah, it's like what are these men gonna do? And they could. It's it's like this. It's hard for a man if he's gonna do years in jail that he's gonna be to take his hand and jerk his dick off, bro. They're gonna need something to stick their dick in. You get me? Come think about it. Think about it. Think about it. Let me say. Let me say. Think about it. Think about it. Think about this. Why do you yeah. think prison is so important what? even now? Back then and now. Because I noticed that if you want to dehumanize and turn a regular man and make him a bitch, you then be locked up in yeah. front of other men and there's going to be in an environment where there's going to be one alpha and one beta. To the point where, you know, someone's going to be getting bent over just to exude power. You know what I'm saying? That you're my girlfriend. <laughs> We always hear the stories, and we hear from certain people that say that it does go on. Yeah. Let me tell you something. People think that this is a joke. Yeah. That say it's supposed to dehumanize you. That's the whole purpose. Not only make get make you as a working class labor for cheap labor, but also to dehumanize you so that yeah. you're someone's bitch. And what I'm hearing, we're on the street because <laughs> Uncle D said this. He said that oh. women, Uncle D, because they 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 they're getting um they're now. Up there in numbers, going to jail, women, especially sisters, especially they are. the fastest growing, the the fastest just... growing uh, prison population yeah, yeah, yeah. is black and women. Maybe, maybe, maybe I should cover that yeah. eventually. I will, but I'll look at it. But anyway, yeah. they're going in there now. They have found through data that women, female criminals, yeah. non-offense or act criminal females, make better prisoners because they're very compliant than men. Yeah, they are. Women are compliant. So, wow. so it makes me they think really that. But look, man. Okay. Yeah. Go ahead. I was going to say this, but look, n- not all prisons are the same. You got you got medium security, minimum security, maximum security prisons. So if say if you're in there for some bullshit, uh, they aren't going to put you in some violent maximum security prison. They're going to put you in a minimum security prison. They separate uh, prisoners. Most well, I don't know how it is down south. They don't give a fuck down south. But most states separate. Minimum for maximum security. Uh, violent, non-violent. They don't all put them together. Say if you do some non-violent tax shit, you know, you're not going to put you in a maximum security prison around hardened criminals. They're, they're not going to do that. They're going to put you in a minimum security prison if, if it's some tax shit. If you did or or some uh, you know some uh, white collar type offense, they're not going to put you with hardened uh, criminals. It's just not the way it works. They se- they separate them. Huh? I mean, it's just kind of how it is. You know, I'm not. I'm not saying I know all this shit. I'm gonna tell you why I know this shit. I just know it. And all this prison rapes, uh, they, just, they, they actually cut down on that shit, man. It's just, you know, it's not the way it used to be, like in the 30s, and 40s, and, and the 50s. It's just different now. It's just like dudes just aren't a straight dude. You know, he ain't gonna be trying to fuck some dude in the house. I mean, I don't know. It's just not. It's just. I think it's more TV thing than anything. More TV. You know, TV always portrays things in a way that aren't necessarily true. And I've talked to dudes that have been in jail, and they, they tell me the same thing. It's not, it's not particular. But you have to stand up for yourself, you know. But it's not like that, you know. It's just, it's not like that. 
I don't know, like, you know what? You call these interesting topics, Gary. I don't know why that is. Man. I mean, what, what's going on in that branding ours, man? I mean, you come on with just some weird shit sometimes on these Sunday nights, man. You know? <laughs> you jump with 5G, then you talk about uh, dudes fucking each other in the well, ass. Well, like, no, if you've been yeah, listening, if, if you but, listen carefully, Greg, this is leading to something greater yes, sir. of the purpose of this stream. You know what I'm saying? Like what? And we well, gotta sit back and listen, um brother. Um so if you sit back I'll I do listen. Um, I listen to you intently. Yeah, yeah. Just listen, it's gonna all add in, it's all gonna add up. Trust me, trust me. This is gonna be purpose for us. Alright, so anything else? I wanna go into this probably one more article and then you know, hope I lay out my go points ahead. to, to this stream. Um, Alright, good. Thank you, Greg. All right, now to the final article, and for those that want to call in and voice your opinion on the subject matter of what has been read or someone else that you want to talk about, the call number for tonight's show is 717-908-1834, access code 917-324-POUND. Today's stream is titled Chaos Rain Presents. Chaos news. <laughs> and make sure I guys like this stream too and share this. Okay, where's the article? Okay, here it is. And let's not get rid of this article because it's getting my nerves. The new weapon in fighting against crime. And this is from the BBC. I think it's BBC article. Solving a murder or tracking down a predator of sexual abuse often requires dog police work. What if a machine could help detect spots, the vital clues they need? Doesn't it sound like some minority report? Doesn't it sound like I robot? Doesn't it sound like Demolition Man? Uh oh! Demolition Man? And if y'all remember Demolition Man, it came out roughly 29 years ago. Is it ironic now we're in the 2020 decade, first generation of the 21st century, we have now the rise of not only machine learning, but AI and automated things? Hmm. Let's keep going. The image on Idaro Fadego, or Idaro Fadego, Computers show mandate or what do you call it, mundane scenes of Sophie's scattered with pillows, a flodal devotee on a bed, some children toys strew across a floor. They depict views most of us would see around our own homes. But these rather ordinary pictures are helped to build a new weapon in the fight against crime. Fadego and the colleagues are using the image of train a machine to spot clues to crime scenes photographers when police officers visit a crime scene or a spectacle home or a suspect home they are often confronted with the overwhelming amount of visual information and hidden amongst the everyday objects they find at these sites may be vital pieces of evidence that could link someone to a crime. Fidelgo, a computer scientist at the University of Leon in northwest Spain and his team have been working with a Spanish national or national cybersecurity institute INCIBE to develop an evidence recon recognition tool that used artificial intelligence to identify objects and police photographers. As to search for links with other crimes taken, for example, a bedroom where abuse has reportedly taken place, officers routinely take photographers of such locations, capturing key information in the process. And these bedrooms have objects, traced textures, on certain and curtains. 
the texture of the floor, all of these spots or sorts of things said Adago. Let's say the toys could be registered by the system and if the same guy used it in other crimes, it could be retrieved. And this is the help of data. Now, if y'all remember, data is vital. It's a necessity for everyday function, everyday life. Without it, you will not have the ability to, to um, keep vital information from music, information, pictures, etc. Because everything we do now in this world is digitized. Most of your, um, the few computers you have are digital. The cell phone, you could say, could be digital. Anything you could name is digital now. Even streaming or downloading is no longer on a disc. It's sometimes digital type things. Even we go from AC to DC, alternate current, direct current, you know, all these things. But anyway, let's keep going. Uh, all right. That might not definitely link the suspect to past offense but it could certainly open up a line of inquiries worth checking out. And it might be something that the investigation officers, depending on who was present, present at the crime scene, would otherwise have missed. One second. All right, back. Fidego and his colleagues have developed a prototype system to be exact that and he's hoping that it will be trailed by Spanish police soon but he mentions that there are already other images recognition tools that police force are using right now now we're going to pause right here if you notice with artificial intelligence and retinal scans or what it call um camera says um what do you call it? visual scanning your face if y'all know that y'all wear and this was a something that was prop or put out through other social media outlets i think particularly ig one european man was sitting on the couch or sitting behind um explaining what is the purpose of artificial intelligence in regards to people covering their face because it's testing the machines to recognize everything from your face and it's going to be more than just what your face is compiled or well it looks at everything from the texture of here the bone structure including your eyes but everything they, you must understand they look through everything through a digital lens and they're able to extract the information multiply and synthesize it in a database where it could connect to every various pictures of you. And one of the best pictures that people put out constantly every day, and they don't know it, is called Facebook. Facebook. Do you get it? It says Facebook. Mm. Not IG, Facebook. So they're able to know who you are through different forms of, you know, digitized images. Let's keep going. All right. Or what do you call facial recognition? That's what I was trying to say. That's what it is. One bit of a kit existing in the form of a bundle of bulky suitcase filled with laptops. The computers are set up to perform analysis on huge swaps of photos downloads from a suspect electronic device. The system can automatically recognize known face and make estimates about the age and gender of individuals in the photograph. It can also find possible images of child sexual abuse without officers having to comb through a full library of pictures themselves. All that's already given people. And mind you, we already have facial recognition and all this other technology for the last six or more years. 
with the help of 4G, mind you. Because with faster bandwidth, that now everything's run and operate with the help of the cell phones, or I like to call computer phones, smartphones. All this is possible now because we have faster bandwidth. This all ties into why 5G and the purpose of it now emerging now, which should emerge a couple years ago, is to now prepare you for something much greater. Let's go. Let's keep going. With the police budget in many parts of the world likely tightening senior officers often hope AI will help their offensive shrinking department copes. This is just one of the ways that artificial intelligence is being used by police force around the world to help them in the fight against crime. The technology is being used to analyze photographers, CCTV footage, evidence, files, and logs of crimes to help give them an edge over those who attempt to escape the long arm of the law. With police budgets in many parts of the world tightening up, mind you. So when people say that the police department is getting more money, no. They're tight with budgets, like most parts of the world. Because what we're going through right now, money's getting very much stretched as we speak. The three major institutions that you know that are insured safety of jobs, always got to be cautious. Because when the money starts to run dry, everything else is going to be spread out and tightened up. They're not going to have the amount of money to pay a whole lot of people to do minuscule tasks where they can have computerization, artificial intelligence, and automated things do it for, for less. Keep that in mind. All right. Uh, where am I? With police budget in many parts of the world tightening, senior officers often hope AI will help shrink department cops or shrink department copes. The public, in turn, are promised that their communities will be safer, so they say. Such technologies already is being used far more widely than many people realize. Do you get me? I said before, and it says here, Facebook, for example, recently reveals that its use of AI to unearth nearly 9 million images of child nudity on its network in just three months. Almost all of those images had gone unreported before, so Facebook was able to pass on details of potential abuse to the U.S. National Center of Missing and Exploited Children. Nearly 200 law enforcement agencies around the U.S. also are use, using an algorithmic de development by research at the University of Southern California that scores the internet for clues pointing to victims of human trafficking and sex trade. It searched both the open and so-called dark web for information contained in sex adverts unrevealing the information they contain to help investigators track down potential victims. Now, if y'all remember Backpage, that was a site that's been around for almost 15 more years until it was canceled and removed and I guess maybe gone under the last, now going on six years, since 2016 or 17 is one of the years. Now, I remember I did a show on that personally. And I can't remember what broadcast I did. Cause I did so many shows, man. I, I sometimes don't keep track of people, so I apologize. But I cover so much of this information. I think it was OnlyFans, maybe one of them things. But I did a history of that, and it deals with the dark web. So if you want more information, go find that on my Chaos Rain channel. Let's keep going. Um, the, algorithm, the algorithm already has taught or trawled through 25 million pages, it has proven so successful that the U.S. Department of Def Defense experimenting with using it for in investigations such as narcotics, illegal weapons, sales, and counterfeit goods. Oh, God. This is not good. Not good at all. Hmm. 
Hmm. All right. The software was recently used to help identify official Thailand involved in a human trafficking case, which is said here. Putting together a complex strand of evidence. All right. Um, where am I? You can rarely help investigators, police in the UK are trailing softwares developing by a digital forensic firm, I think it's called Celebrites, which automatically stifles through potential evidence on a suspect mobile phone. It can analyze images and communication patterns, matches, face, and cross-reference data from multiple devices, helping officers to quickly build up a detailed picture of how a group of suspects have interacted. The firm software was recently used to help identify officials in Thailand involving in a human trafficking case, including police officers, three politicians, and an army general. Okay. The algorithm also can whiz through police data to pick out a variety of possible connections between criminal cases. The ideal is to help police realize that individual evidence or crime patterns are presented, said William Wong, a professor of human computers interactions at Middlesex University. Or we call Middlesex. I don't know why they call it the University of Middlesex. That's very weird. But I digress. He helps to develop a system called Valkyrie, a visual analytic for sense making and criminal intelligence analysis. We're not asked the machine to give you an answer, but to give you what could be possibly relevant, he said. Show me anything else within my various database that could look similar to the way that particular crime has been committed. After a couple or a couple of years of basic tra trials with police force in Europe, including the UK, Valkyra is now well on its way to become a operational tool. We no longer trialing it with dummy anonymous data. We're now trailing it with or trialing it with live real data said Wong. The system he said could help to solve a real crime for the first time in the next few months. So it seemed to me with all the criminality that the world has to worry about from the heavy crimes from the drug kingpins to small murder crimes, etc. With the new technology they develop, it, they make this a little bit more easier to solve cases in less time than it would take years. Now, if y'all knows with espionage on a dumb shit, they, they do monitor people still today and that's really old news because now, if let's say, let's think about it. We have Central Intelligence, we have Federal Bureau Investigations and I think the Federal Bureau is probably the oldest, if I could be wrong. Let me check how old it is. Let me do a quick Google search. All right, let's see. Let me see if it gives a good data. Uh, okay, well, it said it's around 1908 to 1923. So we're looking at roughly hmm, almost almost a century, if you want to be honest. Oh no, this is the Federal Bureau. We want to know. Let's see if they give us an actual date when it was first established. Oh damn, the Federal Bureau. It's, it's, it's now roughly 113 years old. Interesting. I thought it was around 1920 was established, but this institution has been around a long time. 
Hmm. Interesting, interesting. Yeah, learn something new every day. Okay. Which really makes sense because a Jager who was born in 1890-something, right? He would not have been an adult until 1915, allegedly. So, uh, let me check the date. Uh, yeah. well, I'm not going deep about Jager who because waste time. Let's keep going, guys. I just want to go through this quickly. One second, guys. All right. Move forward. Um, where was I? Okay. The somewhat untapped power of police database just waiting to be hooked up to AI is tantalous. Uh, tantalous. The somewhat Untapped power of police database just waiting to be hooked up to AI is tantaling, say Ruth Morgan, a forensics e expert at University of College in London. The potential of absolute phenomenon, she said. However, she notes that when algorithms are used, it is not always possible to later audit their decision making in courts. Either the technology is proprietary and the company that own it don't want to give up their secrets or the system is just so convoluting that proves how it reaches its conclusion is almost impossible. That the sort of issue that could prevent any of these technologies from becoming adopted more broadly. So you say. However, a mind bogging range of possibilities applications continues to be investigated. Morgan herself is working on an image analysis system that can count microscope particles found on the sole of suspects' shoes, think poly, grain, or gunshot residue from the number of any such particles on a shoe. Officers might be able to estimate how long ago the wear was presented in a certain area. Counting these particles can involve weeks or even months of work for a human forensics expert. Getting a machine to automatically take images of these particles and continuing or counting them takes hours, say Morgan. Having tested her systems to court particles, she hopes to next develop an algorithm to also reliable identify the types of particles present. What pollen species for instance. In forensics it is t tiny traces like this that can have the biggest implications of DNA analysis has had a huge impact on criminal investigations. Since it was introduced 30 years ago both DNA still poses huge challenges often when samples are taken from clothing, objects, and victim bodies. One second, let me just do this. All right. All right. For example, DNA from multiple sources is scooped up. That might include genetic material from the victim the suspect, police officers, a witness, or even a pet, how do you tell them apart and count the contributors? Hmm. I wonder how y'all could tell too. It's the sort of work that human DNA analysis do all the time, but it's time consuming and easy to get it wrong. A study of a few years ago found that 74 to of 108 forensic labs in the U.S. detective DNA from three people and a test sample that only contains genetic material from two. In real life, that could have resulted in an innocent person being implicated in a crime. 
Mm. And the funny thing with DNA testing, they had this for roughly 40 years. And trust me, when I said it's always not exact, I question that. Because most of the non-offense crimes that people are innocent was getting was still getting caught up, unfortunately. And with technology now, they could make it more easier. I was looking at some guys, but anywho. Had the labs been more confident about the number of contributors to the sample, such a mistake would have been less likely. Michael Marcino and Jonathan Admin at the U.S. Forensic of National Security Institution, which is part of the Syracuse University in New York State, has designed a system called PACE Probialistics Assessment for Contributing estimation to help them do this. Let me see how far this article goes. I'm going to say how long. I'm going I'm to read this stuff because I want to get through this. They train a machine learning algorithm on thousands of dummy examples containing DNA from multiple sources. It gradually learns the distinguished samples that contain DNA from two people versus those with three sets of DNA, and so on. While Pace can be 100% sure about the number of contributors, Marcino and Admin claim it is slightly more accurate than competing methods for analysis. Using machine learning, however, speeds up the process to give a result in a maximum of just three months or three minutes, said Marcino. Sometimes the fragments left behind by a person are more than genetic, but still puzzle police looking for a missing person or murder victims may I mean, occasionally discover bone fragments in their search. They might not be able to match that material to a DNA sample, but knowing what the individual face looks like could help identify them. Forensic archaeologists currently piece together skull fragments and build up layers of facial tissue using a medium like day or like clay in order to reconstruct a face. This work is extremely laborious and its accuracy can vary between archaeologist Zing Ling, a computer scientist at Louisiana State University, thinks machines can help. He has been developing systems that can take three-dimension scans of a few skull fragments and put them back together again like a, jig a jigsaw puzzle that has missing pieces. The system, which was trained on the shapes of proportions of human skulls, know how to fill in a gap digitally with reasonable degrees of accuracy, like instantly. You get that? And there's many pictures here. But the next part is particularly clever. Lee has also trained an algorithm on photography of people's face in order to find a face that would most closely fit the reconstruction skull beneath. When present with a unidentified, I mean, my fault, unidentified skull, the system creates thousands of, upon thousands of of 3D reconstructions that then search through and find one that match. Now, I'm not sure they use a, a 3D scanner to create these skulls. Most likely, I think they do because we have 3D scanners now, so most 3D scanners will do that if you program a certain way. It could replicate many things. All right. We collect many photos from the internet and first try to reconstruct a 3D face for each of them. He explains, then we do a so-called super imprisonment or superimposition 
to match the 3D face with the skull. For any region of the 3D reconstruction face that don't map perfectly to the subject skull, the system will able to redraw them, modify the face slightly to look more like a potential victim. It will be interesting to see this approach could work when taking aging into account going forward, said Morgan. A face can change quite significantly over time while the skull remains stable. Lee says he now has a working system and hopes the forensic archaeologist will trial within a few months. There are still questions over how accurate many of these technologies will prove in the long term. They may be faster and more useful in small-scale trials, but their true tests will be when they are applied to real cases. Police force will have to show not only that there are tangible benefits from adopting such systems, but also that they are legally and ethically sound. Because always legality is very important. Because when using things and taking certain rights to people, if they found the actual potential person, the criminal, it can be a problem. Everything we utilize has to be written a legal has been within a legal criminal justice framework. Note Nick Baker, Deputy Chief Constable at Staff or Shine Police in UK, the courts need to be accept it so the public will also accept it, which is right, because the court don't accept it, then I was by default people are not gonna accept it because it is unethical and it's out of the constitution of, of the rights of people. I just add that people. A century ago, fingerprint evidence was becoming admissible in courts around the world, but it didn't happen overnight. The first UK criminal trial in which fingerprint evidence convinced a person took place was in 1902, roughly 120 years ago. But it would be another nine years before such evidence became admissible in U.S. courts. Okay, so they didn't get really the okay till the end of that decade. Allegedly. AI and policing is largely entering a period of testing after which its real capability and operational usefulness will be better known. But as Morgan notes, tools that speed up analysis and pull together data just waiting to be analyzed are likely to have a huge influence on criminal investigations in the near future. It will be one of the things where in a few years we'll look back and say, can you believe we did have this five years ago? She said. And that's from showing my future link Facebook file. Okay. All right. Yeah. Let's go down. Let me see if that's it. Um, I think that's it. Yeah. That's the end of that article. I'll leave that in the description of this, of this particular broadcast. So, what's the purpose of all of this? I t and, oh, one thing. If y'all guys have any questions now or you want to Chopped up. The call number for tonight's show is 717-908-1834. Access code 917-324-POUND. I repeat, 717-908-1834. Access code 917-324-POUND. Tonight's subject, Chaos Rain presents Chaos News. Now, the purpose. Why... I'm going into and reading all the few articles and talking about 5G. What does it all encompass? What is the real purpose? What is the real end game? And it's simple. is you're living in the first official wave of the 21st century. Now, I've said this many times. Yes. But really, truly, I'm telling you and re-educate you all again that the way how you look at life and how things move is going to change forever. 
Now, in regards to criminality, and I wish I had Mr. Make it on here because I want a man that did some of this work to talk about this, what's going on in America, certain parts of certain cities where they're now. If you notice now, you got cameras everywhere. I hope you are paying attention. In any district or any city you at, right here in a city where it's predominantly black or other or mixed, whatever, you have cameras everywhere now. What for? Because they monitor every movement and using the latest technology, artificial intelligence, and what they call facial recognition, all forms of technology, to scan the environment of what goes on. There are some videos now of certain police departments, if y'all didn't recall, in different states, where if you remember the movie The Batman, the one with um, Kristen Bell, he has what we call the Echo um, Tower, where he watches everything from the sky through all the T monitors and knows what everything's going on from a sound and pin or any form of that activity. He's able to watch God throughout a bird's eye view. That's what you see certain departments have now with the assistance of the cameras posted everywhere and certain cities across the nation. And now, if you look at these no good, low level thugs, criminals, or we want the bad as bad as amongst groups, our groups, or anything, the days of being what I like to call what Mr. Macon call it, Birch would say, the, the end of the real nigga, it is actually really here now. Now, mind you, I said earlier that black and white violence has been cut down now for the last 27 years, 26 going on 27 years, with the help of the crime bill of 1994. Crime still goes on to a degree. But now with this introduction of new ways of catching your criminal, which they are using now, from what I'm hearing now, and they're using now full vanish, that this era of what we call criminality in America and it's going to eventually be in the past. You remember movies like Minority Report, Demolition Man, etc.? You see the environment of what America looked like in the 21st century. And if I type in Demolition Man, In that movie, and I'm looking at a date of the future when it was projected. This was in the future of 2032. We're now almost 10 years of the time when Demolition Man, when the guy, the official cop, and the so-called criminal is almost upon us. And remember, in 2032, what what was America looking like in the movie Demolition Man? What do you have? You have artificial intelligence. You have virtual reality now. And virtual reality right now is a new thing now that was been an experimentation that was deployed on only a few gaming consoles for the last seven years. You ever heard of PlayStation VR? That came out around 20. 15 or 16, I believe. I could be wrong. That's one of a few glimpses of virtual reality. And now we have what we call a metaverse now. Virtual reality now is here now. Especially if you got an Oculus Quest or some type of VR glasses, it's actually here. The next wave and next step, you're going to soon see CG, what do you call it? C S C G. Semi computing glasses. What's that? Look it up. This is supposed to be the new form of replacement of your cell phones, your Androids, your um, smartphones. SCG is the new technology, semi-computing glasses. That's supposed to have all your apps, all of the things, the logins, information, all on the palm of your glasses. Yes. 
that's also here as well. You're not gonna see more of it until this year or going on next year. You're seeing now you're seeing test runs of it now. This was covered in the partially in the metaverse and it's covered partially in a lot of stock investors. Now so there is tech stock that's putting money into SCGs and other virtual realities and NTFs, which I don't know much of NTFs, but that's like some token that deals with cryptocurrency and etc., which I'm not going to. All this is here. And the funny thing about this, when we look at all this technology back then, that we got to understand the future is here. And the future of what we look at as we know criminality is going to be really the thing to pass in the next couple of years. I mean, certain states are implementing some of this advanced AI and technology in certain states just to catch the little small time criminals, meaning the ones that steal cars or go as far as commit murder. They won't tell you that because a lot of people feel say they need a person to come in court and snitch them out. No, those things are day in the past. If you're still a criminal or a so-called future criminal, black male or black female in the 21st century, I would kindly advise you to start take up some books and find some actual profession, if you can. The days of you trying to pick pockets, steal cars, or do whatever criminal acts, that's going to be over in, by the end of this decade. And the reason I'm giving this warning disclaimer is because they had this technology for the last couple years. And certain states are implementing portions of the technology. I mean portions of it. We don't know how advanced that certain states are utilizing now to catch these little small crimes. What you know or understand about criminality that's put on television you better get a clear understanding that sh that stuff is in the past. The reason why they still put that out in media is to condition you to do dumb shit. Especially young black males that's raised by your fucking mothers. The world that you know it, if you're not really understanding the environment you're in and the, where you act, you can get caught up and you will be doing time in jail. The only thing that really stopping most of you dudes that or wherever you, a man and woman or wherever in amongst our community, men and women that's doing low level criminal acts, non offense criminal acts or actual criminal acts is you not seen a new bill yet posted from either this president or the president that wrote it 20 years ago. And let's be honest, he don't have to really write no serious bill to really lock you up officially. That, that's unnecessary, if he wants to. Because now, with technology now, they could easily lock you up easy now, without no representation. They don't need no person to sit there, stand and witness, yeah, point you out if you did something wrong. They know what you are, they, they spot you out, and the army could put you, will go to your apartment and know where you're at, and have the authorities right there next day to prepare to lock you up. And that is presented by you by the innovation of now 5G, which 5G is now here. And we all know with 5G, things accelerate. Your AI accelerates. You now have the ability to see AI put to use at work. You will now see automated vehicles work much better now with 5G. I ain't going to go into the many vehicles that they have out here on the road that's semi-automatic, automated from cars now, and eventually also trucks, which are repetitive jobs that could easily be automated, possibly. No, it's, not, it's, it's really can be automated. It, it, it's going to be automated. So what they're doing is eliminate the jobs that people normally do to, for let machines do it, is to hope and pray that you'll do criminal acts so they could warehouse you in a prison. And they will, and they, they're going to without no consciousness because let's be honest they have the technology now to do it they were just waiting for the right time right day to do it 
so when you hear people tell say that they won't snitch somebody, I want to say, you don't have to worry about that, player. That's unnecessary. They got all the evidence they need right on camera. You think you could discard your cell phone and you think you're safe? You're sadly mistaken if you're that dumb of a criminal. I would say, to be honest, in the future, the smart criminals moving forward are the ones that knows basic computers. The one that knows how to code. The ones that knows basic what, what is in regards to present day technology are the ones that's gonna probably have a better chance doing criminal acts than you low level criminals that barely got out of high school or be able to read and write officially. Especially if you can't read. If you can't read, you can't do most anything anyway. So you already took out the picture. So in wrapping up this to let it all sink in and bring you all back. 5G is here and it's here to stay. And with 5G, it's going to have repercussions in regards to the modern era of man and woman. Because most modern men and women are not well uh, adapted to the times we're in. Hell, I still don't understand technology as I am. I'm still learning as I go. But I tell you, if I'm still, still trying to understand at my age, you as a young person will have a better advantage. But here's the caveat. You got to put in the time implied to understand and learn it and use it for your advantage. So, like always, it will be better for most young children, if your parents, to get your children into technology and get them in it as fast as possible. Do not depend on the school system to do it because if they teach you now, your children now this, they're behind, they're all preparing you to be warehouse. You're better off taking the time, investing money in your children and the tutors or even taking a special class to get them to understand the basics and move forward onto it because a necessity for the survival. Cause everything is going to eventually sold to be automated that could be repetitive. You know? And one, another thing I do want to say, I know it's a lot of people talking about the issue with Tosh K and her lawsuit. Uh, and I was going to cover this, but I never got a chance to cover it because I'm waiting for a special guest to do it. But I'll give you a snippet. If you Negroes think that YouTube is going to be your safety bet out of your poverty, you are sadly mistaken. And I'm saying this personally because I'm looking at the environment as it is and where it's going. If people are watching YouTube and they're watching you, I guarantee they could, the same website that people are on, they can have the same celebrities that have the official clout be on YouTube and take on their shine and all the advertisements away from you. Because let's be honest, the reason why people are watching the internet and not want, no longer watching television because the television is boring now, is lousy, is obsolete. There's no purpose for television now in the 21st century because a lot of people now are looking for something more relevant that they could rock with, that they, they could, um, what's the word? That's more um that it can relate relate to, and most of that does content. People are more geared to them because they can relate to the average person doing content on dumb stuff. So, like I said, YouTube is not a savior; it's only a stepping stone to a means of another end. My advice, if I got to give my advice, do much and everything possible to scale yourself to be adaptable in the times we're in. That's the only thing you can look for moving forward in the 21st century. And that, you know, this environment is going to be rough to you if you don't know basic stuff, especially basic technology stuff. I say personally because most people don't know how to run basic things on their phones, much less a computer. So if you're stuck on that, you're in deep doo-doo. Ma'am, I'm just saying, I'm just saying. But anyway, that's all I'm going to say. My time's up. No one else got their hands raised up. Um, okay. So, I'd like to thank everybody for listening to today's stream. If you're new to the Chaos Ring channel, thank you. And for those that are going to be future subscribers, make sure you hit the red button and the top bell for notifications for the latest uploads and latest live streams here 
on the Chaos Rain channel. Also, you can now follow me on Twitter at Chaos Rain 7. And you can now add me on a friend on Facebook, Eric Rain on Facebook. Those links are on the About section on the Chaos Rain channel. And also I got Discord as well. It's on the, the, um, the About as well. Thank you for listening to today's broadcast. Until next time, take care and good night.